Today in the bunker, we're going to build some gas stations suitable for the wasteland. Last year, I went to the one of a, a local model railroad show and bought a box of buildings. And I think I've spoken about it in a previous episode. Um, they're all O-scale uh, Bachman and various other manufacturers. I got a box of them. They were incomplete for the most part, but there was enough to make probably 12 or 13 buildings. I got the box for $10. I couldn't pass it up. So in that box were two of these Plasticville gas stations. So we're gonna build the one that's not assembled, and then we're going to put together two different versions of it, one that's in still in use and one that's boarded up, so maybe more for zombies or whatever. But either one will work for post-apocalyptic settings, um, zombie settings, anything you need in that sort of time frame. So let's get our work area cleared off a little bit because mine's in a shambles and we'll get this assembled. These go together really easy, so I'll, I'll show you that in just a moment. If you've never worked with this style of building, they're kind of a treat to, to assemble. They're so basic. They have these tabs that fit together and it's pretty tough to put it together incorrectly. So we just push the tabs together. We'll add a little bit of glue to keep it. If I could stop putting the back wall on the side, that'd be great. Um, we'll add a little bit of cement to that, our plastic weld, and get that put together. Sometimes they're not as square as we might hope. Sometimes the walls are kind of warped. Um, that's the some of these buildings literally date back to the 1950s. So um, I, I'm pretty sure that I've assembled buildings out of this bunch that are probably older than I am, and I'm old. So um, see, like there, I'm trying to put the bottom on the top. It doesn't work. You have to put the, there you go. It sort of keeps you from making those sort of mistakes. And then the roof just fits right on there. It's great. You can make it playable, or you could glue it together either way. So I'm going to get that glued up and get this to be solid. While that one's drying, let's take a look. Some of the features of these, they have, sometimes the doors will open. This one doesn't, it's just held in place. But like these garage doors can open. You can also build a piece to replace them. I've done that where I've made kind of an armored door and put that in place and you can interchange them. Um, like I said, the roof just slides on and off. So we're going to cut some bases out for these and get a floor in there. One of the things I should point out about these Plasticville buildings, if you're not familiar with them, they always have this Plasticville thing molded in and it's almost impossible to remove most of the time. So we're going to make a sign that goes over both of these and put a different name on there or maybe just leave it blank. Who knows? Um, that was, that's the one kind of drawback to these Plasticville buildings is they all say Plasticville and who would actually live in Plasticville other than plastic people? I don't know. Okay, for the base on this one, I'm just going to use chipboard. I've kind of traced out around where this is going to set. I may inset this into the building a little bit so that it's actually a, an inset floor, but we'll see. Let's put it together and find out. After fiddling with this for a bit, uh, I've decided to just go ahead and make a floor that this will sit on. Um, that piece will fit in there well enough. Not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to uh, probably PVA glue this together. I may hot glue it. Let's, let's find out. One thing you'll note is that I cut this out. It doesn't fit perfectly. That's fine. Once it's glued together and that glue's firmed up, we'll trim around there with our trusty razor knife and make that all fit. And here's an example of what I was talking about when the walls can be kind of warped. This one bows in a little bit. Um, it's 
probably brand new out of the box, I think they still do it. Um, you could get a heat gun and probably heat that up gently and bend it back, but really for what we're doing, it's not a big deal. The roof will still go on and come off easily enough. So unless it interferes with the mechanical function of the building or the appearance really, really bugs you, uh, it's not really an issue. Once it's painted, you won't even really notice. I ended up hot gluing it just because I wanted to get this video done sometime this week. So that worked fairly well. Um, hot glue gives a pretty good bond with this plastic. Uh, doesn't take much. And I went ahead and trimmed the base around the building to kind of neaten that up. So we're going to make a base for the other one and then we'll get ready to add some details and start priming. Now that each of these has a floor and we've trimmed up around here, some of you may notice if you've been watching my videos for a while and you know, thanks. Um, I did not on this, on these buildings rather, uh, leave a lip around here to do a little bit of texturing and some plants and whatnot. I'm going to make some pieces of basically asphalt for these to set on like a lot and uh, they'll be easier to store also. I'm, I'm starting to get a little tight on space so if I can cut the basic down even a little bit that helps as far as transporting these. One of the things missing on both of these buildings is the main window for the sales office I guess. So I'm going to add a window frame in there just that I can kind of build off of. In this case I'm using some balsa wood. You could use some long matchstick or even some off cuts of chipboard to kind of do the same thing. And this has the tabs that you kind of get behind and you, you sort of bend whatever it is into the frame and it's held in place by those tabs. So I'm going to keep doing that for these and then we'll one of them will get some boards, the other one will probably use some mesh. And to hold that in place, I just laid a bead of super glue on there just to keep it from popping out. After adding the window frame, I took some sculpting mesh and just glued that in around the frame and bent it so it fit the floor and then just glued it as best I could. I used super glue and some baking soda and that uh, kept it on there. I did the same for the garage doors. Uh, I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but I used window screen in that case, but you could use the same kind of mesh, uh, drywall tape, any number of things, just to, just to get that impression of mesh in there. For the abandoned one, I'm going to use coffee stir sticks, and we'll just glue these into place as if this has been boarded up. So we're just going to super glue. I'll cut these to size and kind of super glue them in here. You don't have to do it super neat. You want to look at, make it look as if it was done maybe in a hurry. To cut the planks, I'm just going to use the coffee stirs. I just measure off how long they are and just take my EMT shears and just neatly cut them. Uh, you can do them with end cutters or almost anything. Just take a knife, whatever. That's why I like working with these. They're soft. I think they're birch. Um, and they cut really easily and they look great when they're painted. Alright, once you have those cut to length, I just put down some drops of super glue, put those in place. You could use PVA also. Uh, I just wanted this to dry quickly. What I'm going to do is take a, one of these and split it. I'm going to use a ruler uh, and lay on the middle part and split it with an X-Acto knife um, and make some half-width planks to glue on either side of this door because this lip that's on here for the the window I, I won't be able to get a very good adhesion just gluing to that so I'm going to glue those strips on there and then we'll glue some across that door so that'll be a little stronger. All right, so to split these I'm just going to lay this down I'm going to take my ruler and just kind of eyeball that halfway point We'll just press that down firmly and just score this, well, maybe in a straight line, and maybe with a knife that's tight. Okay, we'll just score this along that metal ruler. There we go. And once you do that a couple times, you can kind of shave these down. And my eyeballing was off a little bit, but in any case, that's how you do that.
All right, and there's our pieces on the door, and I, I left a space for that door handle because that sticks out a ways. And we'll paint that, make it look good. So we're going to put some cross beams on just like we did the window, just a little bit shorter. I added the planks over the door, and then for good measure, over the windows on the garage doors as well. Easy fix for the Plasticville sign also is to just cut a couple of stirrers to a proper length and just super glue them over it, and that'll give you a basis. You can either leave it that way, or you can make another sign. We'll probably print up something and attach that, and we may do that with the other one as well, just because it, it really cleans up the look once you get that Plasticville off of there. Before I get ready to prime these, um, I had a look around my bits box, and I found these are some fan units that I had 3D printed. I believe they're from Corvus. But it was just something I wanted to add to kind of add some detail. Uh, I put a piece of ladder on here. This is just some O-gauge plastic, uh, plastruck ladder. And I'm going to look around for a few other things, see what we can add. I changed the roof on this one to be uh, corrugated iron, as opposed to just the gravel that's going to be on that one, just to sort of differentiate them a little bit more. I primed these black, and then went back and did an overspray, which little heavier than sort of a zenithal uh, with gray, just to try to bring out some of the detail. And we're going to chip the paint on a lot of this too, so I wanted that, that gray, almost concrete looking finish underneath it. But it really kind of makes those details come out and sort of brings the whole piece together. Once you start to put some color on these, they start looking pretty good, I think. Um, I just added I took some painter's tape and masked off the area I wanted the darker color to be and just sponged that on. I just used some green craft paint and just sponged that on over the gray to get that kind of chipped appearance. And then did the same thing in reverse. Um, I did take a flat brush and sort of cut in along that line with the white just so I didn't have to tape that again. It wasn't quite dry and then just sponged all the white on, and then went back and picked out details in green. And we're going to add a piece here momentarily for a sign. I figured out the name of this place finally. And then the, the ladder, I did the same thing. Just picked that out with some green and then some rust color. And the roof, I, that was already gray. I stippled on some very dark brown, some burnt umber. Uh, and then over that, I did some nutmeg and then some raw sienna, just stippling and kind of building it up in layers so you get the rusty patches. I painted the fans with a gunmetal color and did the same stippling of rust. I did dry brush a little of that gunmetal on there just to get a few metallic spots so you could see it. I painted the, um, the mesh the same way with the, with the metallic and then went back and added the rust. Same thing with the window screen in there. And then, you know, of course, picked out the door handles and the trim around the, the window and the door. So it's looking pretty good. Um, we're going to do the same thing with the other one, except that's going to be white over red. And, of course, we'll pick all the details out in red, and we'll, we'll do some work on this uh, aged wood and uh, touch on how we do that. All right, before we uh, do anything else, let's... Let me show you how I do the concrete on here. And it comes out like this. What we're going to do is put a base coat of this pewter gray. You just use any medium gray. And then we're going to stipple it with a lighter gray. All right, I laid down a base coat of the pewter gray. Now we're just going to take some of this uh, lighter gray. I'm not sure what the color that is. Cool gray but just light gray, whatever light gray you have. And I've got a kind of a wonky brush anyway. It's really good for stippling. And we'll kind of get most of that off of the brush. And then we'll just stipple that on there and just kind of do that to taste. Um, if you want, you can add in um, some tan a lot of times there's color variations in concrete depending on when it's poured and where. 
but just add that and then just do that until you're happy with the way it looks. I also just want to show you briefly how I did the uh, two color technique on the other building. I'll do it the same way here. I just measured up the desired distance and tape that off all the way around and then just take a sponge and just sponge on whatever color you want and that gives it a very worn appearance especially on that kind of crinkle finish uh, sort of uh, concrete adobe whatever that is Okay, and we'll just do that over the area that we want that color. Then we'll let it dry a little bit, and then we'll peel that tape off. And then we can just cut in with the other color, in this case kind of an off-white. And I used uh, two to one white and that light tan color to give it kind of a worn appearance. Because everything needs a worn appearance. Um, and just cut that in along that line so it stayed a nice crisp line and you don't have to retape it. As long as you're careful, it, it goes pretty well. Sometimes when you're doing the sponge, getting down on top of these details that stick out, you, you'll kind of hit them with the sponge, and that's really not what you want. So you can take a brush and just kind of stipple it on, and that works pretty well too. And while you've got that secondary color out, uh, like on this building, I added it to the doors as well. So I've already done that to the front door. I've put a, a base coat on there and just very carefully stippled. You don't want to get it on your concrete. And just add that in there so of course it has a what? A worn look. After adding color to all the little signage details and everything, got pretty much uh, the entire carcass of the building painted. Uh, waiting on the rim of the roof to dry. We'll do the rest of that. In the meantime, I'm going to start on this wood. We're going to hit that with a base of this dark gray, and then we'll start dry brushing it up. When you lay that initial gray color on there, you're not really painting it. It's more of an overbrushing. You're just trying to get some color on it, and especially to catch that grain, which you'll I don't know if it shows well on camera, but it really does make the grain pop a little bit. We're going to let that dry for a moment and then we'll start dry brushing up with some light gray and then some maple sugar tan and really try to bring out that wood grain. Okay, after dry brushing with light gray and maple sugar tan or any kind of light tan you have, and I say dry brushing, it was really again more of an overbrush, but you're just trying to catch all that wood grain you can make that wood grain pop even more if you hit that with a dark wash. Um, I'm probably going to skip this step this time because it doesn't really need it, but uh, if you have some wood stir sticks and they don't really have a lot of grain apparent, hit them with a wash, that should make the grain pop out. So we've painted the roof, painted our fan section, our exhaust pipe, we just put some gunmetal on there and stippled on some rusty colors, and uh, so it's pretty much good to go. I'm going to add some graffiti, and uh, this is going to be ready for the table. All right, so there's our gas stations in all their glory. Uh, this one is going to be an active trading post. This one will just be abandoned. But you could use them either way. Um, in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this inspires you to make something awesome, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.